Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's get right to this here. Now, today's guest, um, by the way, let me just tell you something. I did this episode a while back. Um, I, the stuff that we talk about is still very relevant. Um, we just got, we're so lucky that we're so far ahead in terms of laying down these episodes. As I believe it or not, there was at one point where I thought, uh, we might have to kill the show. I really did. I couldn't get, we were having trouble getting bookings and then I hired an ISA and everything changed. Uh, and now we're like, we're swimming in content. Now today's guest has an interesting story. He was a builder. He was a house builder and got tired of taking a bunch of risk, risking a bunch of money, spending eight months building a house only for the realtor to come in, sell the house and make uh, not that much less than he did. He was tired of that. So he got his license to sell his own inventory and then realized, hey, this is a path for me. Um, so what we talk about on, on the show is, or on this episode, I should say, we go over a ton of nuggets. Now, some of these are going to be reminders for you. Other ones uh, or other nuggets uh, are going to be new for you uh, because, you know, like, you know, everybody kind of delivers it in a, in a unique way. So I think you're, you're going to take a lot of notes. So get a pen and paper ready. Um, let me start this off with, you know, there, as you guys know, um, there's no silver bullet in creating a successful business. And we talk about that. Uh, we talk about why you should have a FISBO and expired channel. Now, you guys have heard that before. This guy was late to the party in so many things, but he still made it work. And, and I break that down. I make him unpack why he was late. And, and while some of these things may be obvious, how he made them work for him. We talk about why you should be creating systems from day one. He built a business so successful that it outran him and he and it started to break down because he didn't have systems in place. And I got to tell you, I'm experiencing this right now with, you know, with our radio uh, arm, real estate radio experts. We started onboarding a client every week and all of a sudden, man, it was just sales, sales, sales. And uh, all of a sudden I was, you know, we got really, really overwhelmed because we didn't create systems. So if you have systems or you don't have systems, um, I encourage you to start building them right now. We talk about why you as a salesperson should have crazy tenacity. You know, the, we've all heard fortunes in the follow-up. And we, he shares with us how he, what's his philosophy on following up and how he does it, how often he does it. You know, he will say that, you know, no one ever loses a lead because of too much follow-up. So... <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, a little housekeeping. Um, hashtag for the show, unpack that idea. My Twitter handle, at Super Agents Live. I'd love to meet you out on the Twitter. Um, and, and by the way, by the way, use that hashtag and I'll follow you and I encourage our little world here, our little people, uh, our little community to follow one another, share to one another, and learn from one another as much as you can. Um, Go to, I know you know, guys do not want to miss future episodes like this, so I would encourage you to go to Super Agents Live, download my free ebook, and, uh, and you're going to be get, you'll get on the list of, uh, of kind of like the insiders. There's many things I share with that list that I don't talk about openly on, on the airwaves here. Okay. Um, look, we got to keep our lights on. Got to keep the lights on. We've been doing this show a year and a half. Um, two things. Real estate radio experts, listings are where it's at. Gary Keller will tell you that. So the easiest way to get listing leads is radio. It's a proven method, path to success. Go to realestateradioexperts.com. Uh, check out some of my videos and hit the, hit, you know, if you think you're ready. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But fill out the getting started sheet and, uh, and you know, you and I can have a chat. Um, lastly, uh, you know, as I've been talking about this for the last week or so, you know, Facebook for real estate agents, you guys are on Facebook, but you're, most of you guys are not using that tool, that platform to its full extent. Uh, we're creating a product specifically for you guys, how to everything from creating a fan page and getting your first 100 likes 
That's pretty basic, uh, but not everybody knows how to get those likes. Um, and then, the, and that it, you know, how to retarget people, uh, retargeting with ads, how to write ad copy, you know, use of images, uh, creating custom audiences, creating lookalike audiences, all that stuff. So if you our first 100 units, the deal I made with you guys, first 100, 197 bucks. The second, the next 100, 297. Then we're going to cap at 397. So if you want to get in on the early pricing, send me an email and let me know. All right. Hey, let's get to it. Today on the show, I'm excited to talk to today's guest. Um, as you guys know, we are taking more of a geographic approach lately. And uh, today's guest is in Springville, Missouri, right in the middle of the country. Um, today's guest, his team size, he's got seven total. Now we're going to dig into this a little bit because he's seven total people. Three of those people are agents, but four of them are admin. I'm curious that to know why the, the it's, he's built it like that. Last year he did 255 transactions for a total of $50 million. I'm thrilled to welcome Dan Holt. Hey Dan, thanks for taking the time out, man. Thanks for calling. So listen, I want to get into your business. I, I know you know you want to talk about how you you know lead handling, uh, you know lead management, all those sorts of things. But before we get to the business, I'm always very curious as to the man behind the machine. So take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself personally, and then we'll get into what you're doing today. Perfect. So um, actually, I got into real estate when I was about 16. My dad used to drag me out to old rental houses and used to uh, force me to. Uh, uh, I was essentially free labor. Um, and I swore I'd never have anything to do with houses again in my life. So, um, went to college to find a real job and realized that I could make more money in real estate. So I started by building and, uh, economic, uh, collapse in the housing industry kind of drove us out of that. Um, and, and so I got my license to essentially sell my own real estate is how I started. And I mm. basically turned work away for two years. So, um, then I just gave a run at it. So, okay, so so your dad was a realtor? Uh, no, actually. He was a uh, rental just, guy? Uh, yeah, it just supplemented retirement with rental houses. Got it, okay. Uh, and, uh, and so you're free labor. He was making a sweep stuff up, and you know you didn't like that. And so, so you went to college, and then, and then as I understand this, Dan, so then you started building houses, is that? Yeah, that's right, for myself. Um, wow. Um, probably a little looser licensing restrictions from probably the rest of the country. Got in uh, Springfield, Missouri. So, um, you know, basically, if you had a cell phone and a Rolodex, uh, here you could build houses. Interesting. Okay, and and so you're building houses. You're giving. Uh, you know, you're 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 putting all this blood, sweat, and work into building the house. You sell the house, and then you realize, holy smokes, the real estate agent that I, I just hired to open the door is making a, a ton of money in terms of time Correct. and effort. Okay. Okay. Yeah, with no risk. With no right, no right, no risk. What a brilliant model. Um, no, it's a genius. I hated it when you're on that side. I yeah, love it now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, what did you do? So, so uh, how, how long were you building houses, Dan? Um, uh, just about five years. You know, okay. I was a, a young guy, I was about twenty three. So, about twenty. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I guess I'd say about five years before the oh seven oh eight meltdown. Um. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. So. So the 08 Lehman Brothers. Them. That took you out of the building. Uh, okay. I get it now. So it's possible that if if Lehman would have happened and uh, that you would have still stayed on the on the building side of things. Yeah. Yeah. I had. I had no reason other than um, essentially the market just disappearing. I had no right. reason not to. It was a. Uh, you know, we were actually doing great in the business model with the realtors. I joke. You know, they literally just opened the doors. Yeah, but I didn't have time to go sweat. I mean, we were literally, you know, we were. It was keep in mind it was just me, but we were, we were doing thirty five houses a year. I was happy. Man, I was. I was happy. You know, it was. Um, yeah, I was content. I didn't know any better. I was twenty eight years old and I was making money. Well, I mean, you're six. I mean, listen, that's a very successful twenty eight year old man. I mean, doing turning <laughs> thirty five houses. Now, were you going full on ground up? Yep. Yep. Custom spec market, anything we could touch. Wow. I mean, we were, yep. And then, um, and, and, and uh, so I, well, I guess money was easy to come by. Cause I was, I was just, I, you know, the next yeah. step for me is going, geez, how does a 28 year old get that kind of financing? Um, but, uh, you know, local banks out there, it was, it was easy right. money. So right. yeah, it's right. It's still mom and pop bank in here. So, so what did you do? I'm curious. Uh, so now you get a license, you're going to sell real estate. 
Um, what are some of those first steps? You know, how did you go about building your list and and you know and getting this off the ground? Because because if if O eight took you out, that means you uh, did you start in O nine? When did you actually start selling real estate? Uh, I started selling real estate in two thousand nine. So this okay. is the end of my fifth year. Okay. Yeah. So so O nine. I mean, listen. That I mean, that was dark days. Nobody knew how yes, long right. it was going to last. Um. So, I mean, what did you do? I did. Did you focus on short sales? What What did you do in '09? Um, how did you start out? Well, um, so motivation is the uh, great innovator, I guess. Here, um, I have a. At the time, I was married. Keep in mind, I was all in real estate, so you know the sales just stopped, and we didn't lose anything, fortunately. So, I mean, but but we 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 were able to liquidate essentially everything that we had in inventory. And it literally came down to that business was losing about twenty five thousand dollars a month, and it literally came down to. You know, there was there was no reason to be proactive and build anything new because right. we were still liquidating what we had. Yeah. Uh, so I got my license, like I said, just to sell my own stuff. Mm, and then I okay. thought, here, here is, yeah, that's the reason I got it was just, yeah, you know, I was basically giving myself a 3% pay raise yeah. or 6% pay raise across the board. Yep. Um, which, you know, over 30 houses was a big deal to us. Um, mm. So what we uh, transitioned into um, um, was it, it literally came to, there was essentially no work in our market, no work. All the subcontractors had left. You know, general contractors were hanging sub or contractors were hanging subdivisions. They were hanging, you know, all these houses on these banks. And there was, you know, and of course, the prices just dropped out. I couldn't compete with even other new construction that was on the market because it was already being slashed, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent. So I, I couldn't compete with that. So some of we were in it. Was, long story short, um, I came in and sat in my office. I kind of had this little breakdown of, okay, I've got a wife. I have three kids, uh, two in diapers. Um, I got one choice. Scary man. I can buckle down. I can buckle down and do the things that nobody else is willing to do. Um, or I can walk into the bank just like, you know, 90% of the other builders have done and figure out some liquidation escape plan. And, and, and I wasn't willing to do that. It's like I said, it's a small town. Right. I know all my bankers. Um, I see them at basketball games. I see them at, you know, I don't mean to make it sound we're 300,000. So we're not terribly small, but it's a small enough town. Yeah. It's a big little town here. So everybody right. knows everybody. So it, I, that wasn't an option for me. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good, man. You got some, you got some, you know, integrity there. Um, uh, why? I'm just curious. I want to get into what you, what's working for you in selling real estate, but just for me, why you got your license, you're, you're, you're getting rid of, you gave yourself a 3% pay raise, you're selling your own stuff. How come you didn't get into flips in 09 and in 2010? So I did. I played with that a little bit, you know, naturally with the, with the contacts I had yeah. and, and we did a handful here and there. Of course, keep in mind when that first started, um, I wasn't liquid enough ah, at that point in time. Got it. Um, and I was still scared. We still didn't know where the market was going. Yeah. Then. And you know, it was doomsday. It was, is it bottom? Is there going to be a bottom? Right. You know, where is the bottom? And I sure wasn't jumping back in full fledged at that point. Got it. Okay, so you, I, I get it. I get, I get your mindset at this point, right? You got these two little kids, and you did not want to carry, right? You know, you saw real owning real estate as a as a giant like you know weight yeah. on your back. Okay, at that point in time, it was a cancer to me. Yeah. Okay, so what did you do? So now you're selling real estate. What What did you? How did you start? What did you do to go and build a list and, and really start selling not your real estate, but other people's real estate? Um, so right off the, you know, I had, a, I initially had a lot of contacts just because I had been in the building business. Okay. And essentially, you know, um, I guess we all know, or, or, or I assume everybody knows that basically what, what we have to do as realtors is, you know, find a transaction, find something that either needs to sell, wants to sell. Um, mm -hmm. find somebody that wants to buy or needs to buy and find a way to throw ourselves in the middle. So what I, what I tried to do initially right off the bat was I believed in the market. Um, I believed in the values that were there. I believed in, in the entering the market, as you said, the flip market, the spec market, the, or not the spec market, the, um, the, the buy and hold market. So I found a way to throw myself, um, in front of those who wanted to. Um, I had a lot of people, a lot of bankers contact me because keep in mind, I wasn't, um, I, I was a builder, ex-builder who hadn't gone out of business and who hadn't hung into the banks or anything. So all the banks started calling me initially for probably a year to finish all these builder walkaway projects, all these, all these projects, these builders walk away. Mm. So I struck a deal with these banks and I sold about 40 houses. And this was my big start really, um, was kind of the blending of the two. Now I'm not in the other one at all, but, um, um, bank contacted me and said, Hey Dan, 
you know, we know you've built, you're the only builder that hadn't hung us with anything. Um, we have 26 builder foreclosures to finish. Would you be willing to finish them? I said, sure, I'd love to finish them. My normal rate's uh, 12% above cost to finish them. Um, I'll charge you 10%. I get to list them and sell them. Mm. And they said, that's genius. So right there, I had an inventory of 25 houses. That's that's uh, great. So that's the first time I've ever heard something like that happen. I, and, and, you know, I'm sure in most markets that uh, um, you, you couldn't do that. So that's that's a, that is a genius idea. So so all of a sudden you get to, you know you you get in there now. Now w- w- earlier you said that all the subcontractors had left. Did you? Yeah. What did you do? To, I mean, you had 26 projects. I mean, did, were you out there cutting tile and you know? No, no, it, no. So I mean, you know, naturally some of them hung around. Some of them just didn't have work to do. Okay. Uh, you could hire them cheap. So it, 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 yeah, it was easy. It was cheap, and they were easy to find. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now, okay. Now let's get past that. So, okay. so now what? You you get you, you, um, you get rid of those 26. Uh, you know, how did you how did you transition yourself into real estate full time? Perfect. So, so first thing I realized is that, um, that, that, that kind of kept going and these banks kept coming to me with stuff and, uh, kind of like I said, they're kind of escape plan. And I, I, I decided, and I was running both. And so what I had to decide, and, and, and this was kind of my turning point, I think is, um, um, I, I went to a class, um, it was a KW class. It was called mega agents down in Austin. It goes on every year in the fall. And, um, I just was sitting there and I kind of, it kind of just slapped me that I need to actually make an effort of selling real estate. Um, you know, the, like we said earlier, the risk reward plan from yeah. building, possibly losing versus selling real estate. Um, it's just not, it, it wasn't a good economic model for me at the time. So, um, so I just decided to make a full on effort. Essentially, I, I subbed out the general contracting and basically just skimmed a little bit. Um, on basically passing on a referral for finishing the bank stuff. And then I just started selling them. I jumped in full time and I basically haven't touched buildings since. And I, I have any, any build jobs that I have now. I just contract, just, you know, I just, I just pass on to somebody else and they pay me a referral fee for it. And so, but, but, but my big kind of launch, I guess, out of that was realizing that I can't wear three hats at one time. If you want to be a master at anything, you've got to dump everything else. It's never just becoming distractors. So I was, I wasn't yeah. any, I wasn't very good at either one of them at that point in time. Right. Right. So, so again, like what, here's what I'm trying to get at, uh, Dan is, is, you know, um, I mean, did, did, so, so if I look at what you're doing, what, what you historically, what were you were doing, right? You did it for yourself. Then you did it for banks. And it was sort of like a B2B thing here, right? B2, mm-hmm. This B2B play happening. R- real estate is very much a consumer facing uh, product service. All that. I mean, basically you're in retail, but your product is houses. What did you do? And did you go build a farm? You know, did you did you, did you grab a niche? Uh, you know, I, I want people to something to people to go. Oh, you know, hey, maybe I can do that. You know, I want some. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. Yeah, everybody wants the the magic wand or the magic bullet of real estate. And I, yeah. I, I I operate with the premonition that there isn't one. Um, okay. Here's here's what we did essentially. Keep in mind that um, not knowing essentially where your next paycheck coming from or, or not knowing at that point in time, if, if you have money for next month to survive is, um, a great motivator, right? For some, it, it buckles some. So, so what we, um, essentially did my, my tactic at that point in time, keep in mind that I didn't have a lot of money was essentially get as many listings as I can. Um, I've always been a believer that, um, he who with the most listings wins period. Um, the, so, and my response to that initially until I leveraged some of this off was I get a phone call off of, I had a, I had a, I set up, it's, it's nothing genius and it's free. I set up a Google voice number for my signs. So I knew, um, anytime anybody was calling me off a sign, cause that's the only place that number was. So, it, you know, you just, I just transferred to my cell phone, my ears perked up. I knew that it was a sign call. I knew two things. Number one, I knew they were in the subdivision, whatever subdivision this listing was in. Um, and I knew they were sitting in front of the house. Um, so two objections that a buyer typically has about, um, about a house have already been overruled. They have number one, they've accepted the subdivision. Number two, they've accepted the front of the house, the curb appeal. And I literally knew they were sitting in front of the house and it was just simply getting them in that house that minute. So I had this, um, this, I mean, honestly, this was my initial tactic. This is as sound as my business strategy was at this point in time in my career. It was just literally, I will run faster. I will get in front of more people 
than anybody else, and by getting in front of them, you know our conversion rate goes through the ceiling when you get in front of somebody and have a face-to-face. Yeah. Um, that was my goal at that time. It was just find a way to get in front of as many people as I can. Like I said before, find out how to throw myself in the middle of as many transactions as possible. Okay. So, so real quick, tell everybody, how did you, so, you know, uh, when you get a Google vo- voice number, how did you know, did you uh, attach that Google voice number to a different ringtone? How did you know that? that- yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can forward that to any number that you want to. So I, you know, the old school way was, um, that, uh, a lot of agents would have what they call the, I mean, around here, they just call it bat phone. So like, um, you know, agents would have like literally a cell phone. They would, pass around for like call duty, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Um, so you can take a Google voice. It's, it's, I mean, Google voice.com is you can go in and you can put in a, a, an area code and then it will find a number for you available. Um, and then I put that all on my sign writers and then you can forward that to whatever phone number you want to. So I just forward it to my cell phone number. Right. right no, but, but, but right. So my, oh, but, I'm sorry. but my, my question to you, Danny is, is you, you, when you forward your Google number to your cell phone, uh-huh. your cell phone just rings. I, I, no, it, it well, So when you answer it, it beeps, it beeps and it says you have a Google voice. Oh, okay. Call from, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Press one to accept, you know, two to send a voicemail. So as soon as I heard that, it's game on, you know, you're perk up. Okay. So that helps you. Okay. That helps you with your tracking. So, so, but normally when people, you know, you, you want to get in the middle of as many transactions as possible. I think for mm-hmm. most people, it's much easier. You have to be more deliberate to find a listing lead rather than find somebody who wants right. to, to, to buy. Right. So what, what sort of things were you, how are you deliberate about getting on the listing side okay. of things? So, so at that point in time, keep in mind it was a buyer's market. So I knew that I didn't necessarily want to, at that point in time, you know, the listings would come from the introductions, but I was trying to get in front of as many people who were immediately ready to transact right now. Okay. That naturally developed into, um, and yeah, I essentially don't deal with any buyers now, so that naturally developed into um, a listing-based business. So our first strategy, um, you, you know, like I said, from that naturally came the, well, we'd love to buy this house, but we have a house we need to sell mm. conversation, which would naturally roll straight into, um, great. What time do you want to meet? You know, tomorrow at three or Thursday at five, it's up to you, you know? Um, so, so we'd have those conversations and, 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 and essentially it was just, it was just an introduction to somebody. It was just a way to find, to get in front of as many people as possible. So our, our next strategy really became, um, so, so we all know that whenever you have signs out there, that means more calls, that means more internet leads, more internet traffic, et cetera. So, so our next move was we were literally getting so many sign calls and internet and internet leads. I had to hire somebody to handle just those. And so in that I made a position, um, that I didn't even have a name for it, but, um, um, I essentially got a speed dialer. Um, and we just started going through for sale by owners and expired. It was a, you know, it was a market that a lot of houses were expiring in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, so we had a list of, you know, well, I, for our market, um, 20 to 30, um, new leads every day. And we just, we blew them up. We blew them up and, and we told them we're not going to stop calling until you either relist with somebody else or, you know, I'm, I'm kidding, but, right, um, right, right. but, um, we just bugged them until finally they either gave in and said, you know, if we let you come out here, we stop calling us. Sure. Uh-huh. Or, <laughs> or, um, uh, or we just actually converted them. And, and that's essentially been our business model. Now, yes, we do farm. Yes, we do. We do all those things typically people do, but by far our highest success ratio is our for sale by owners and our expired. Still. Yep. Absolutely. Is it because Springfield, the, you, 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 you're, uh, you know, I hate to say this, but is it because you're, then this is, this is, kind of common right are they just not sophisticated in in springfield missouri i mean that's because like i don't oh, I'd, I'd absolutely no 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 offense taken number one i'll lead it with saying we we have never yet quite hit a seller's market we've been close to a balance market or we've been on the front side but we kind of keep pulling back a little bit springfield's not a destination location we don't have you know large corporate america here we do i mean you got some of that stuff but it's not our big driving you know do you know anybody lives in springfield missouri no so it's the same thing like we have a really low cost of living our average sales price um and the board is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. um it's just not a destination location so we know ne- i think we had more expires because of, i think obviously these sellers markets i probably gonna have less um um expires than most but but yeah, and and we were the first one here in town that was doing it. We Got yes, it. technology we're okay. a little bit behind the curve, maybe. 
Got it. Okay, so you were ahead. Okay, that's what I was getting at. It's because uh, that's interesting. That is very, very interesting. That uh, that um, you don't even. I don't know when you when was this? Is this it's 2010? When did you stumble upon? Okay, we're gonna do an expired and Fizbo uh, channel. Um, well, I would you know so um, I would say probably um, beginning of 12. Now I wow. had always sat and done it myself. Okay, just by the good old fashioned you yep. know. Um, essentially not rotary dial, but you know, just touched on phone and, but it wasn't until the beginning of 2012 that we found a speed dialer with somebody to dump all that info in for us. So all we had to do is hit play and, and yeah. we were in front of 40 people. And, and who do you use? Do you use uh, like land voice data or, or, or red X? I use, or? We use Vulcan. Vulcan. Okay. Okay. Huh? Let me break in here with a message from somebody that uh, kind of sponsors the show. Land Voice Data, uh, I recommend those guys. I endorse those guys. They will let you try this service for free. No obligations, no nothing. They'll give you two weeks if you call them and say, hey, man, listen, I listened to the show. Um, people have gotten back to me and said, hey, look, they gave it to me for a whole month. So go to landvoicedata.com slash superagentslive, sign up there, get your free trial, and let me know how it goes. There's no reason not to do this. There's no reason not to have an expired or FISBO uh, uh, channel in your business. All right, let's get back to this fascinating episode. Um, okay, interesting. So, so I have to assume, man, if, if, you know, you were the first guys in 2012 to, to really focus on expires or FISBOs, um, you know, I have to assume something like a home value site, which, you know, I mean, were you early on that? And still, do you still maybe do that? Nope. 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 So, um, we're, so keep in mind that everything, like we keep outgrowing ourselves and like all the stuff that I should have theoretically said, like all these people are probably, you know, listening going like, Oh my gosh, that's so disorganized. Like it, it, it like literally has just grown so fast out of control that, that I'm more interested in chasing the deals as most agents are. And I kind of left all the infrastructure behind because we were really just going so fast. And so now this year is when I actually have a full time, you know, staff of four, I've slowly grown it, you know, one per year that is actually going backwards now and fixing all that stuff, like fixing our internet conversion stuff and fixing our, like you said, our home valuation stuff. And yeah. we, we actually hunt and catch most of our leads ourselves. Very few come in organically saying, Hey, please go, come give us a valuation of our home. And, and so, and how do you, so you're out there hunting. What, um, wait, okay. I want to get to what you're doing with that, but, mm-hmm. but you know, something like, you know, a home value site or playing with Google pay per click, Mm-hmm. You, 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 like it's 2015, and it sounds like you are just now <laughs> getting into those channels, right, right, okay. right. And the and the sad thing is, I'm one of the first ones here doing it. Now, we do the typical, you know, I don't manage any of my own paper click type stuff, and that we have, yeah. you know, we we buy some through our company's website, that type of stuff. The typical truly is Zillow, yeah, you know, Realtor.com leads that everybody else has their fingers into. So none of that's innovative by any means, but our follow up method is where we is where it's where I, I bet you we're outpacing anybody else around here for sure. Well yeah, I mean look, and we've all heard that, you know, the fortunes and the follow up, but it sounds like it sounds like right. you, you know, you, you you're just a, you're just a, a beast, man. You're a guy who's you know, like I mean earlier you said, hey, we're not gonna stop calling till you, you know, list with somebody else or list with us. Yep. I mean do you just file restraining it, order or tell me no or file restraining order either way. I'm I'm not gonna call until you tell me the one. So is that is that overall your model with all this stuff is just 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 keep running until you you catch them or wear them down? Um, yeah. So I said I joke. I mean, obviously, you know, we know when it knows a no. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. We, you know, we have to leverage our time with who's the effective lead, but we have enough. And and but yeah, I mean, until they say no, if it's even a remote sniff of a possibility that they're going to interview other agents, or they're going, then yeah, we're calling them again. Okay. And and whatever, whenever we say we're calling them, we call them half the time. So if you say we'll call you in thirty days, we call them in fifteen days. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I think that I mean, I, I love I love that tenacity. I love that persistence. And I think it, I, I think too many people and I see very successful people doing this, man. You know, even trainers. I know I know you know, we've had all, all the big trainers on this show and I, I know many of them personally and and they're very lackadaisical with follow up. I mean, it's right. it's amazing. I'm like, oh, hey, why don't right. you? I'm like, you know, I introduce you to that guy like you got to do more than just call him once. You know, so, um, you know, you know, you know, you know what, um, the typical salesperson's impression is that if I call them too many times, 
there and get annoyed with me. And I promise you, if you ask and ask and ask, not one person has ever lost a lead because they followed up too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's the opposite. Then you drive by. When you don't follow up is when you drive by and you see your competitor signing. Right. Door. And you call and you say, well, you didn't call me back. I didn't think you were interested. Right. Uh, or, or you know what? Or even I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I, this is what I do. And, and sometimes it's to my detriment. So let, let's say you call me. And and uh, and I go, oh, man, I really like that guy, Dan. Right. I might list with him uh, or, or, you know, relist my expired with him. Um, get, here's the deal. I am not going to save your phone number. And, I, and, I'm, and I'll remember your first name. Not, but and the mm-hmm. reason why I'm not going to go and save you in my phone is because I'm expecting that you're going to call me back. And, and I'm expecting right. you're going to follow up until I'm ready. Right. And uh, right. um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a, not their job. It's not their exactly job. right. So that's a that's a great tip for everybody to 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 walk away with, you know. It's just it's is keep keep following up till till you land it. So Dan, what I, you know? Again, I know that you're just now moving into some Google pay per click or home value mm-hmm. stuff, um, which which you know maybe spring build, you know maybe you guys are a little bit behind the curve. That's okay, you know. When, sure. I think the more you get away from the coasts, whether east or west, you know things start to get a little bit slower in terms of when things hit. For sure. What today is working for you and your business? Um, so, first off, um, I guess we all know this. So, so we're still huge in that market. We're we're, we're obviously buying a lot more leads than I thought. Like, and I think I told you before, our our business is um, purely listing based. Obviously, that generates a lot of buyer leads. So, mm-hmm. you know, you asked me before, and and, and I'll kind of take you down the road that you were asking before. You you, you had kind of. Um, you were kind of interested in the fact that I said we have seven people on team, three yeah. are agents, four are admin. I did want to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, my, my philosophy has always been, um, that, uh, real estate's about 60 to 65% admin. Um, the personalities that are really good at selling, um, aren't good at admin and vice versa. So, so it's always been about, um, keeping my salespeople and myself in front of people. That's what we're good at. That's all we're good at. We're terrible at paperwork. I don't want to touch it. I'll screw it up. My ladies yell at me when I touch paperwork or when I open the file, they're like, what do you, what do you want? What are you looking for? Get out of here. Don't touch my stuff. Basically. Yeah. Um, so it has been, so, so we, so we leveraged off, um, to somebody on the team who had, um, uh, telemarketing managing experience to come in and simply blow up the phone all day long. Her, her goal is in, in just set appointments, mm. just set appointments. And, and, and so, so I have my, my buyer's agent literally goes in the field. She shows five houses to buyer number a, and she comes like, and, and, and they know it's going to be her, but they've only communicated with Emily up to this point till they first meet Jen at the door and Jen runs them through four houses, sets them up on a follow-up plan, you know, either writes an offer, you know, finds four more houses, you know, basically sets up the, the follow-up plan. She comes back to the office, she grabs another file, she goes out, she needs another buyer, sees three, three or four more houses. So keep, so um, 80-20 rule, right? Um, 80% of our money is made in 20% of our time. Yeah. So if you take two accounts of people and you keep them in, in their 20%, 80% of the day, you can exponentially four times increase their monetary results, which essentially tricks down trickles down to the business owner. So that's what our business model has been set up on. Okay. Is a follow up person, a call person, the lead generator and 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 salespeople are salespeople. They're not lead generators and they're not paperwork people. Yep. Well, well and, and I, 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 I mean I think you can silo it like that for sure, but I, I you know let me ask you this I it just just hearing that I, look I, I like that method for sure. I'm not gonna I don't have any issues with it. But well, it, it's, it seems to me so. So Jen, Jen, there's Jen and Emily. So Emily's making the appointments. It seems mm-hmm. to me that when Emily is two things. One, Emily says, "Okay, hey, do you want to meet with our buyer's agent, Jen?" Somebody says, "Yeah," and they're like, mm-hmm. "Okay, let me let's let's come up with a time Tuesday at three o'clock." Okay, great. And then it seems like you know to to uh, I don't know to. Ig- it seems like it would be a good step to go. Okay, hold on a second. We got you down for Tuesday at three. So, you know, if you have another five minutes, sit tight. I'm going to try to get Jen on the phone. I want to introduce you guys. And it seems like making sure. potentially that early introduction right there and it w- would uh, would help the transaction. Higher conversion. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Now, don't get me wrong. If we can get them to the office, um, our first initial uh, our first initial appointment, we always try to do an initial sit down on the buyer side, you know, a first initial sit down buyer consultation. Okay, it's going to save everybody time, them, us, uh, higher level satisfaction. 
But sometimes they just want to see houses. And yeah. honestly, sometimes they don't care who it is as long as they have access to that lot box. On, on average, on average uh, how many houses does Jen show those buyers? Um, our average used to be 2.2. I'd say it's probably three and a half. Okay, so that's not too bad. Do you do, yeah. d- does she have any parameters in play? I mean, so when Emily is, and I'm sure this is going to help somebody out in the audience, but so when Emily is making that appointment, I know her, that's her. That's her, 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 her. She has a win when she puts somebody on the calendar. What about all the 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 well, like the pre qualification piece, and right. then the, and then going over and saying, "Hey, listen, hold on, you know, is this really in your price range? Right? Can you really afford this? And you know, do you really, you know, what's important to you? Neighborhood or a big kitchen or you know what I mean? Like, who goes through that? Is it Jen at that first meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so so if Jen has time to, obviously, like you said, she, she will make contact. But but initial, so Emily's going through the initial pre qual. You know, okay. and it's simply great. Have you had an opportunity to talk to the lender yet? Oh, great. Do you have a you know Do you have a pre approval letter? perfect if you can bring that to 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 our first meeting with you i mean if we can get that in writing we can we won't show anybody over one maybe maybe two houses without some kind of evidence or at least talking to their lender and knowing that hey yeah they're good to go because we're not here to you know we're not here to chase somebody that obviously it's not prequel so so yeah emily's going through the prequels you know okay. what, what's really you know what are your number you know what are your non-negotiables what are you absolutely not willing to live without and then what are some things on your wish list and so we're you know, and of course you know with the um, you heard of the internet, I'm sure. The um, we, we just recently, like a year ago, we heard it here. Um, you know, a lot of these buyers are coming to us with what they have. Uh, you know, they've already got their list of five houses they want to see. So yeah. then we go through their list, and what of these five houses is important to you? What is not important? Well, I think right. this one doesn't really fit that. You still really, so we can weed them out. I mean, yeah, absolutely. We're pre qualifying on the phone. Um, and trust me, if they're not pre qualifying on the phone, and Jen shows up, I'm here about it. So. That's, 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 we have very tight parameters on that, on, 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 cause we're not just out goose chasing. We are out to win people over and we're out to yeah. show them that yes, we provide a service and yes, we, but, but we want to help them as their professionals to get the right house. Not, it's not just a tour. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're not, I was just going to say, you're not a tour guide. And I think, I think, and, if, mm-hmm. and so I think, I mean, I think there's lots of stuff. I think people in the audience should take the number one, take that away because I think too many people, especially if you're newer and especially if, you know, you, you don't have a bunch of deals, you know, they're, they're so anxious go, yeah. Yeah, let me put you in my car and you know and, and they're like oh I'm working I'm working with this buyer but you know what they they need to go look guys you know I, I'll put you in my car but I know I need you to be serious and I think the other piece Dan and I'd love to get your take on it is if somebody says oh hey I'm, I'm, I'm hey hey Jen I, these are the five houses that I'm interested in and Jen says why are you interested in this house and they say right. well it's got a big backyard or it's close to school I think another great thing that for a takeaway is for people to go why you know Oh, it's got, it's got a big backyard. Why is that important to you? Right. You know, exactly. and, and maybe they're, so it's to go one or two levels deeper. So I, I want to talk, if you can, I, um, in our, I had you fill out a quick sheet and, uh, you, and I said, what, you know, what should we talk about? And you said, Hey, most agents, you said, this is what you said, how we handle leads. Most agents don't know their own numbers. Uh, you you make sure you know your market data, market knowledge, and market numbers. So there's a lot of market. There's a lot of numbers in here. W- tell me your philosophy, your thesis around knowing your market and or numbers. So um, I just heard this last week actually um, uh, at, at a class, and it was kind of you know we all have, and this was kind of genius to me. Kind of just hammered this in, but this is how I always. So my business has always been based on numbers, and this came from the building world, and, and knowing that essentially all businesses, if they're truly businesses, because we're talking real estate, but we're running micro businesses, or we're running some pretty. I mean, you know, these are pretty serious businesses. Absolutely, if you take them that way. Um, so business essentially, that you know, you talk about. We always talk about these different personalities and trying to identify um, um, all these different personalities. But at the end of the day. The common language, the common personality, the common thing that we all have in real estate, home buyers, home sellers, the one common denominator with all of us is numbers. That's all we essentially are cutting down to is, and when I say numbers, it could be the sales price, it could be, you know, the commission. It's all, well, the only, the only common, the only common language we have is numbers. Um, so, so I focus on numbers because essentially that's what, whether people are buying an investment property, they want to know, you know, cap rate, they want to know rent amount, they want to mm-hmm. know payment amount. Buyers, they want to know numbers. So, so I just learned to um, speak in the language of numbers. So, whenever I set up to any appointment, you know, obviously I have the, you know, we have all the buyer conversations, like the pre qual conversations, the listing pre qual conversations. But essentially, when it gets down to it, and when I get with you face to face, 
what I'm going to talk about outside of my conversion scripts and all that. I'm just skipping past all that. Um, the thing that people want to know is market data and market knowledge. Um, I have told, I've taught my team, I've taught in classes, I've taught around here, um, and, and I, I learned this very, very early. So, and I guess like you were saying earlier, for the people who are newer, um, I have always said that market knowledge and market data will trump experience any day because most agents, experience agents, and, and honestly, we become become complacent. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you think you're going to want walk in, you're going to win on your name, and you walk in and get your teeth kicked in by somebody who's two years because they walked in and they had all the data on the subdivision, they knew the exact data, and they could spit it off the top of their tongue. I don't mean... I don't mean they had it in front of them and can recite it to you. They walked in and they said, House ABC sold right. for, you know, 123 Main Street, sold for, you know, 97.2% less sales price ratio at, you know, $98 a foot. And, 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 and so, so that got ingrained in me pretty early. So essentially everything, it's just a numbers game. It's a numbers game, a contact sport, and, and everything equates back to a number. And it's conversion ratios. It's a numbers of leads make. It's, yep. So anyhow, that's just a common language. No, I agree. And I think that I think going back to I, 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 when it comes to tracking, like, I mean, first of all, numbers, you know, you, you should know in that subdivision, it's 98 bucks a square foot. And that one got a 10 percent premium because it had a great garden or some weird. I don't know. You know, it had granite. Correct. Right. And it's got it. Um, so you should, that's all market inventory you should know. But in terms of numbers, I think everybody should know, like, OK, it takes me X. It, it takes Emily. Right. Because because you are running a business. Right, Dan. Yep. I mean, you're not. Yep. So, you, hey. I know it takes Emily 15 calls to 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 convert or to get a transaction or or, or, or an appointment. Yep. You know, Jen's going to show yep. 2.2 houses and she's going to sell it. What where and and I and I I can very much sense that from your building world, right? You got to know how much that two by four is, how much that box of screw is is, and you know, and you know, and that paint is trending up, right? That you know, yep. so. <clears throat> What are some of the things that you, in addition to market data, what are some of the other numbers or, or areas that, that people should track? Um, your personal numbers. So, so people want to know, you know, when you meet with them face-to-face, um, what's your success rate? You know, they don't care how long. You know, very seldom I get you know, asked how long have you been in the business. Yeah, right. Um, and, 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 and a lot of times they don't ask these numbers, but when I volunteer these numbers, they're impressed, right? Any statistic can be made to be in your favor. So, you know, I sit down and, and I talk to them and, and, and um, so your list of sales price ratio, um, your days on market versus, and it's always in comparison too, right? Yeah. So, so always compare yourself to the board, compare yourself to, I don't know, you know, Re- Remax, Coldwell Banker, whatever, right. whatever you want to do, yeah. uh, whoever your competitor is, um, you know, the board's average days on market is 78 days. Ours is 52. The, you know, the average house sells in our market for 96% with the sales price ratio, ours is 98.2. You know, so we're going to sell you 30 days faster for 2% more. Is that important to you? Right. right. Is that important to you? That's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. Who's I mean, going like to say no? Said, it's all questions. You always phrase it in a question. And nothing that they can say yes or no to. I mean, it would be, you know, unless you know, obviously, the answer is going to be yes. I mean, I, nobody said no. That's not important. Um, so, 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 so hold on. So, Jen, for you... Uh, is doing the the buyer stuff. You are are you still working on the listings? Do you go to listing appointments? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yep. For you, Dan, what is your what is your unique you know sales you know what's your USP uh, that that wins you two hundred you know got you two hundred fifty five deals last year? So <clears throat> that's funny. So if I had to say what what's our unique sales proposition, it's just that it's simply breaking it down. These people, you know, okay, so let's. Let's go backwards. These people um, are interviewing two and three agents. Yeah. I'll tell you what the other agents aren't saying, at least in my market. So, okay. so like I said, on the unique, so so they're not walking in. They are walking in, all selling themselves. Okay. Okay. That's all they're selling. They're selling their name and their ego. And all these people walk in. I walk in. And I sit down and say the first thing. I said, if you want to hear about me, I'll tell you about me. But this right now is all about you. Okay. What your goals are, how fast you want to sell the house, what, how much money we think we can put in your pocket after, you know, after net you after sale. Um, why are you moving? Why are you in its in its finding their level of motivation and finding their big why as to how I can help them through this transition. So, so our unique sales pitch really just goes back to that. And I break it down and say, look, I'm going to tell you right now. I know these other people said they have it. I don't have a magic wand of real estate. I, I can't. All I can tell you is numbers. 
I can tell you why the market's doing what it's doing. I can tell you our average does a sales price ratio and our average days on the market. I can't promise that to you. Mm-hmm. If you listen to me and follow me, though, um, th- these are what our averages are, and they, and they are for the people, you know, which are, and we're 85, 85% of houses that we list, we sell, and we sell them in 98 per, you know. So I just, it's numbers, 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 and I, and I realize I'm kind of just spewing that at you over and over. No, but- no, that's good. I mean, listen, I mean, I, look, people are driving the, in their cars, right? They're, they're walking their dog. I mean, that's, that's fine. I, I, you're doing great. Um, and I think, you know, going back to numbers, I think one of the things, you know, if the agents are going in there and, you know, I've seen a billion listing presentations and, and I, I, there's so much overlap. It's crazy. And I think people need to, number one, make their stuff their own, right? Cause, cause you know what? If I, if you, if you're, if I'm going to interview three listing agents, I, the guy that's different is the guy or girl I'm going to hire. And I think, right. I think what you were, what you were unpacking there, Dan, is, is the idea of being a trusted real estate advisor as against just somebody who's going to sell, you know, trying to go in there. Hey, I've been in, I've been doing this for 15 years and I know this or whatever. And I think part of being that and I, I want your I'm talking too much. This is your show. Yeah. No, 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 no. I love it. Thank I want to get your I take. I, I think an important piece in that listing presentation would be like, hey, hold on. You know, let's before we even get to, you know, how much you can get. Let's how much do you own the house? Right. How, let's talk right. about your equity. Let's you know, let's talk. Let's let's help me, you know, act as a financial advisor, because this is the biggest you know, financial thing that some, somebody's going to do. Well, and even if they're not business people and if they're not in the business world, everybody wants to play business owner. So if you sit down with them and say, look, I real this is all the, we've talked about all the emotion of why you're selling. You know, I know you raised your three kids here, but let's face it. Now we have to talk some business and, and, and you're obviously, you've always had some business exposure and you're obviously a savvy business person. So, so when we talk about business, we're just going to talk about numbers now. Um, well, mm. they just struck their ego. They're, they may be terrible. There's maybe they filed three times. In right. Ego and, <laughs> But now I've, you know, I've struck their ego. They, and now they just, and, and now they want to act business. You know, right. our approach is our business approach. And this makes business sense to you, right? So I just took the emotion completely out of it. There's right. no emotion in this. There's no, re- this is purely numbers based. And this is why they can't argue with the numbers. Yeah. You just can't. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. And, and, and what about, um, um, you have, do you have something specific or, or interesting or unique about the way you do lead management or the way you handle leads? I wouldn't say that it's unique. You know, it's just the utilization. I mean, everybody has access to the same tools that we used. Um, it's just the fact that we actually use them. Got it. Um, <laughs> well, and it's terrible, but, you know, it, it, we didn't initially, I'm not going to lie to you, but it was very, you know, we had to convert from entrepreneurial purposeful because we were, just flying by the seat of our pants. And, and I think every agent naturally, I mean, most agents, I would argue you naturally fall into that, at least initially in their careers. Yeah. Now we're trying to turn purposeful. And so, and, and, you know, we're just linking into you top producer, but I'm not gonna lie. We just had Excel spreadsheets and we had a bunch of them and they were annoying. And unfortunately I had great staff that, that knew how to put them together. Cause I don't, uh, um, yeah. so it was just spreadsheets that we tracked everything with. And, and, um, yeah. Well, okay. Well, look, I mean, you've done, you know, you have five years in the business, you know, 250. I mean, you've, you have, a, that, you've done extremely well for yourself, Dan. What is, what's, what's next on your, what's on the horizon for you and how are you going to get there? Um, you, you know, obviously our goals increase every year. If you're not growing, you're dying. Um, we have, um, as far as position wise, so our, my ISA, I call it now internal sales agent, um, which is uh, Emily, is transitioning into an office manager position. You can't transition to another position until you find your replacement. So now we're trying to find another full-time, essentially, caller, you know, lead developer, cultivator developer. Um, uh, with that, you know, like I said, we have full-time marketing people. We have full-time contract those people. But it's, it's, it's now adopting the uh, junior listing agent and junior buyer's agent uh, underneath. Um, so going on a different split. So um, so basically they will be, so, you know, I've hired a, a listing agent and I have a, and I have a buyer specialist and they both work under me and they're on a split with me. Well, now I'm going to get them somebody on a split with them. Uh, like my buyer's agent last year, um, just straight buyer sites did 75 buyer side deals last year. Wow. Um, exactly. Most people across the nation know that the 48 is probably the average a buyer's agent can do a year. A good buyer's agent did 75. Why? Because we kept her in her, 20% all the time. So now though, she needs somebody to start helping her. She has too many, you know, we have too many people wanting to look at houses. So it's finding somebody to put on a 50, 50 split with her. 
so that the house still makes its money. And it's just leveraging more people. The best investment anybody can ever make is a person. So um, I think that I was talking to somebody today about this. Um, we as agents get hung up on commission splits. You know, well, gosh, I'm only going to get, you know, uh, 0.75% of this transaction. No, you're going to make 80000 a year. Right. You, you, you know, the commission talk shouldn't be had most people don't even understand that we talk about it because we know it and we understand it but so yeah so the new the new model is we're going to hire junior showing assistance junior listing specialists underneath who i currently have and hopefully uh hopefully that switches to 500 within about three years okay okay so 500 500 uh in three years um um so you're gonna be doing a, a ton of recruiting okay that's uh, look that's great man look i'm gonna i'm gonna ask i, I was we're going to wrap up. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to ask you a crazy question um, just because mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I, I get, I, you know, sometimes I don't ask the right question. So here's, here's a crazy sure. question. It's this. What's something, Dan, I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I think I pretty much spilled my guts, but I, I okay. think, uh, I guess probably the only thing if I had to rehash on it, well, I don't know. It's just the one thing you can't teach anybody and successful people versus unsuccess, unsuccessful people understand this. One thing you can't teach is motivation is finding the motivated. For, and, and I mean, in, in employees, it's in sellers and buyers. Um, you know, whether you, whether you find a motivated seller or an unmotivated seller, it still costs you the same amount of time, same amount of money. So just continually find a way to find the motivated and act like your pants on fire and act like you don't have any money next month. And that's uh, a pretty unique motivator. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You, um, uh, how about this? Who has been your mentor? Um, my, so a couple, um, my mentor, well, first of all, it's my dad. My dad, uh, just retired with about 25 houses paid off. My dad never mm. made a dollar over $30,000 a year in his life. Um, and he's making about 20 grand a month now, um, just off the, so, I mean, as far as investment wise, he obviously worked hard at anybody I know. Um, in real estate, a good friend of mine named Adam Grady, he, he was in real estate. He came in. He was just somebody that I, you know, I jumped in his hip pocket. And when I had nothing to do but time, I just jumped in the car with him and followed him around. It was probably a wee bit annoying for him. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I always always look at people who are doing more units and more volume than you and find a way to stick around them. If you, I've heard this one time. If you ever want to know where you're at, I think I hope I don't mess this up. If you ever know where you're going to be at in five years, look at the five people you're closest to right now in the books that you're reading. And that's, what you, that's where you'll be at five years. So find those people and hang around those people. If you're, you know, you can soar with the Eagles or run with the Turkey. It's your choice. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's, 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 uh, that's a Jim Rohn quote, right? You know, you're, you're the yeah. average of the five people you spend the most time with, um, you know, right. whether that's your fitness, your health or your, your bank account. Um, so Dan, I'm going to ask you, I want to know what you're reading. Uh, so I'm going to ask you for a, a book, but I know you're a KW person, so you cannot. <laughs> Gary's books are off the table. So here's the setup. I'm an, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go get today? Uh, number one, um, I go and grab this, this is going to sound a little silly, but go and, and everybody's always said this, but go and grab the Nordstrom's book. Um, um, and I don't remember exactly which one I have on my desk. I just I went to Amazon, found Nordstrom's book. It's just about customer service. It's just about, um, how to have out, outstanding customer service through the entire transition. Um, there was another book that was actually written about Hilton and how they, um, how they treat a client when a client walks up. Learn how to address people by their names. No, you know, everybody likes to hear their name over and over. Um, ours are all customer service based right now uh, that we're reading our team. I'm not going to lie. They're not about uh, general business. Obviously, we all know there's a top 10 business list out there that we're looking at. But right now, we're focusing on the customer related. There's one on Disney right now that I'm reading. Yeah. Um, hey, it, well, can, listen, can I give you I'll – I'll give you one. I don't know. This is all customer service. Uh, uh, Tony Shea's delivering happiness. Okay. Um, this this is a, this is a story of Zappo Zappos. Okay. And listen, if everybody, if you wanted to get any of those books, Delivering Happiness uh, by Tony Shea, you can get a free copy on us. Just go to audibletrial dot com <laughs> slash Super Agents Live. Hey Dan, my last question for you is: do, do you have any personal habits that you feel have, has contributed to your success? Um, silly, yes. Um. Number one is an exercise plan. 
Um, there's, you cannot maintain, uh, so exercise and diet to me is the absolute, um, and I'm, I'm by no means a fitness pro, so I don't want you to think that. And, and if you look at me, you wouldn't think I exercise or eat good, <laughs> but, um, the, um, you know, a routine exercise plan keeps the energy up and built the endorphins. You stay high all day long, literally. Yeah. Um, the, and obviously what you eat, if you're ingesting a ton of carbs at lunch, you're crashed at three o'clock. You have no energy. You'd rather go. Um, honestly, those are my two best habits. Outside of that, time blocking. Um, mm. Walk in the morning. Know what you're doing every day from nine to eleven. Know what you're doing for lunch, and and know that your appointment times are you know one o'clock to three o'clock or two o'clock to four o'clock, yeah. whatever they are. The 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 people who will make the most money in this industry are those who can master repetitious boredom, and they just do the same mm. thing over mm-hmm. and over and over again. Well, I agree. It's not flashy. It's not exciting. Yeah, no, I love it. And I'll tell you on that on that whole workout and eating right thing. That's that's Tony Robbins' thing. You know, he's like, uh, you know, if you if you can't have self mastery, there's no way you're going to master whatever business you're in. So, hey, well, listen, Dan. Here's what I always suggest. I encourage my audience, if they've gotten anything out of this episode, I always encourage them to reach out to you, find you, uh, and say thank you. And look, maybe somebody's going to hear this and go, hey, I'm not, I, I want to join Dan's team. I want to, you know, I can be his, uh, his new, you know, uh, appointment setter or whatever. So where can people f- reach out and find you, Dan? Um, so obviously, uh, Sprinkle, Missouri, if anybody other ever comes through. Uh, but uh, email Dan Holt Holmes, H O M E S, not H O L M E S, Dan Holt Holmes at gmail.com, uh, cell number 417-300-3001, Awesome. Feel free to call anytime or to an email. I'd love to make some connections out there. Cool. Yeah, and listen, everybody, uh, if you're if you're driving, walking the dog, whatever you're doing, you can get all the stuff. It'll be on the show notes. Just go to superagentslive.com, and we'll have that right under Dan Holt. And Dan, look, I'll be the first guy to start that thank you chain off. Thanks for taking the time out, man. I know you, you, you have a lot going on, and you're super busy, so I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for the time. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. All right, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Yeah. Let's go.